Okay, hi, welcome Ted's Garage. So, I had shot an intro to this project we're about to start, but uh, I had some bad assumptions on it. I've done some homework, and uh, we'll share with you what's going on. But basically, I've got the boat hitched up right now. I have to take it to my marina, who's going to be great and take the boat off for me and give it an acid wash because I need to do some pretty substantial trailer repairs. Let me show you what's going on. Okay, so I am underneath the right front of the trailer. Uh, towed this back about three weeks ago from uh, Green Lake, Wisconsin. And the trailer tires were brand new from 1998. So obviously I had new tires on order since this is gonna go. And I noticed that I can't get a piece of paper in here. I'm hitting right there that just sitting here with the load of the boat, that trailer tire is making contact and rubbing the inside of the fender well. So, um, as I said, I had shot a previous video of this and I thought for sure that my torsion axles were shot. Um, these torsion axles were made by Reliable out of Kendallville, Indiana. Um, and after many, many pictures and emails and phone calls between this axle manufacturer, Reliable, and Dexter, who, if I were replacing these axles, I would have Dexter make new axles, um, came to the conclusion that the axles are sagging just a bit. But what Reliable told me is the boat manufacturer, trailer manufacturer Prestige, who is no longer in business, was notorious for building trailers with very tight clearances. So <laughs> they found that this clearance was too tight. And what they determined, and this was Reliable telling me, is you look here on this bracket, this is a one inch bracket, meaning that there is one inch of lift between the main beam of the axle and the trailer frame itself. What they told me is that this became a very known problem with Prestige trailers, where what Prestige did to address it is increase this to a three inch um, bracket so that there would be an additional two inches of clearance between the axle and the trailer frame. So <laughs> originally my thought was, and unfortunately this is all welded on, uh, so my thought was to grind off the welds and weld in a new piece of 2x2 two two tubing. This is all 3 sixteenths inch wall. So to go weld in a two by two, but then I started thinking <coughs> if I go up two inches, that's that much higher that I have to climb into the boat. Um, it's that much deeper the truck needs to go and the truck exhaust going underwater to launch the boat. So what I've decided to do is put a one by two in here, <coughs> which will get me so that I have about an inch of clearance um, standard for each one of the tires uh, that's not enough for the amount of upward travel that the axle manufacturers want so then what I'm gonna do is simply cut ovals in the inside fender well to allow the tire to go up into that but I have to do something since just sitting here I'm touching the fender well so what we are about to do is we are going to tow this bad boy to Bases Marina, uh, or I should say Bases Marine in Bolingbrook. They're all set. They're going to lift it off for me. While it's in there, they're going to do an acid wash. I've done a lot of it, but there's parts I just cannot get to when it's sitting on a trailer. And then they will store it on one of their trailers until I have the repairs all done and can uh, put it back on and at that point in time it's already June 11th by the time I make it that far 
uh, at that point in time I've got about three weeks of boating to make up for so I know this thing's going to central Indiana central Wisconsin so I've got to get going and to add to it the president of our homeowners association just stopped by and inspections happened during the week and guess who's getting a warning letter because a boat is parked in their driveway which is a no-no accord to according to our local city ordinances so anyhow properly motivated just to get in the water um, next stop is the marina to get her lifted off bye for now okay so i am here at bases where i bought the boat bunch of great guys the salesman i bought the boat from uh bought the dealership probably about five years ago and they're getting ready to lift that off the trailer so i can then go take an empty trailer home and start my repairs been lifted in at least 23 years. You can see where she needs a acid wash underneath uh, where the trailer bunks go and I couldn't get to. Alright, they got her dropped down on a very beefy trailer and that'll be her home till I pick her back up. Okay, so it's Saturday morning, and I've got to get at this. Hopefully I can knock it all out this weekend, although it'll be a big job for me. Um, yesterday, the metal stock I was waiting for came in. That is a 1x2x3 16th wall, and believe it or not, that stick right there cost me $200 delivered, and that was after doing a bit of online shopping getting 3 16th wall in that size tubing is not easy so the plan is I have to grind off the weld to separate where that axle bracket is welded to the frame and then insert a section of that tubing to add one inch of additional height and that's going to be half of my repair and then the other half of the repair, I'm going to cut a oval inside that uh, plywood for the inner fender well using the previous tire rubs as my template so that, uh, you know, we'll have an inch of clearance to start with. But when the axle does compress due to a shock load, um, it will be able to come through that area and not rub up against the inside of the fender so that's the job for today i have already since the trailer's going up an inch i've gone and uh, raised that one inch so that when we get it set up and start mocking things up we're level again and uh, for now it's clear stuff out and get set up to cut some metal Okay, so to start off, I wanted to make each one of these 16 inches, but the front axle <coughs> has the hydraulic line, a cutout for it, just a half inch behind the axle hanger. So due to that, I'm only going to make the front one, front two 13 inches, and then we'll make the next one 16 inches. So let's cut some metal. I got a little helper here to hold it and to... Uh, Oil and cool the blade. Hold it, please.
that's one. Definitely veered off just a little bit there, so we'll have to grind that flat. So we'll come back to you as we finish up the fourth one. Okay, so far we've got the four pieces cut. Now with the remnant, I want to cut this in half. So since I am as much of a novice on welding as there can be, I want to be able to have some stock that's the proper 3 16 and be able to um, do some test welds and get the machine set up just right on the stocks. Linda, if you would hold. you know it. Okay, we'll be back after repairs. Okay, so we got the band back on the bandsaw and finished the cuts of the 3 16 inch tubing, including I cut the remnants down so that the uh, I can use that to dial in the welder. So now what I have is just some 1 8 flat stock. Um, they didn't have 3 16 at Menards and this will do. Basically I just wanted to cap these ends. So I'm going to cut it to fill the opening, let the weld fill the 3 16 um, I need eight of them. So I've got this set up just so I can cut eight identical really fast. So here goes. Safety third. Those sparks don't look good going against the 100 year anniversary Harley Davidson. So... We'll at least throw a blanket over it. It's not a welding blanket, but it's better than nothing. Nope, maybe a little bit over yet. That should do. That's cool. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. We're going to have to come back in a little bit. 
Okay, so now we're at the point of welding the caps onto the end of the tubing to have all that done before it's on the trailer. Go on, Jackson, go. Definitely have trouble seeing through the flame and knowing where I'm at. Wonder if I need a bit more shade. We'll give that a try. See if that makes it better or worse. some grinding to clean it up. I'm about as novice as a welder as you come.
on the home again. That works better for me. Alright, let that cool off some. Go on to the next one. We'll be doing this a while, so I'll bring you back uh, when we're done. Oh, gotta turn off music. Don't want to have anybody talking about pretty women. Alright, we are down to grinding the last plug weld, so thought I'd uh, turn the camera back on. Okay, so that should be it. We're 12.15 almost. Probably started about 9.15. So I don't know how close to come. But we've got the caps all welded on there. So now, the big job. Gotta move the lift. Get the trailer in here. And do the scary part, which is cut off the axles. Grind those down. So that these can be welded in as a spacer. We'll come back when we're set up. Actually, here's all four pieces ready to go. 
the ones in the back where I don't have to worry about a hydraulic brake line. I made those longer so there's more weld area to the frame to uh, for the spacer. So that's how we're looking. Somebody's bored. Looking for birds, rabbits, and squirrels. Okay, we're approaching the point of no return. Tires are going to come off, then I'll come and show you some specifics and some markings I have on the axle. And after that, it's we're cutting welds and uh, you know, we have to keep going and make sure we do it right. Here goes. So we're going to go for the idler axle. We're going to go for the idler axle first. Um, first, to show you what I've done, I have marked with tape there and then marker where the axle lines up today. So um, that measurement doesn't have to be precise. It's uh, that's roughly the 60-40. Um, split of the trailer that's why that's important but when it comes down to it we're gonna mount this rear axle first <coughs> and once we tack up one point in roughly that position then we're going to have to triangulate from there to here to we'll have the truck hitched up and uh, we have to be right off the center of the bottom of the ball um, so that we know the axle is pulling true and then we'll go forward and we're going to have to do the same thing for this one uh, only this one I can't necessarily drop it and pull it out of the way <coughs> I could if I want to disconnect the hydraulic line but I'm going to try and do this without disconnecting the hydraulic um, since I just bled that out it's brand new fluid and the brakes are working perfect um, I'd like to not mess with that so um, at this point, we are going to start grinding the welds and trying to drop the axle and uh, cross our fingers. See ya. One thing I did want to show is each axle has a plate like this. So I can't read it through the viewfinder, but I'm pretty sure I know what it says. It says uh, reliable axle and I think trailer manufacturing company, Kendallville, Indiana. Uh, and then it shows 6 slash 98, 3700 pounds beam capacity, and then a serial number. So. Um, reliable was real helpful when I talked to them they had the history of supplying these axles to prestige trailer and uh, you know they told me that when they saw these pictures they said that oh, okay you've got the one inch mounting bracket and prestige had problems because the tolerances were so tight um, that they later went to a three inch mounting bracket putting an additional two inches of lift between that axle and the underside of the frame for the trailer so uh, again I think I mentioned it before but I'm doing a one inch piece of tubing 
um, simply because I think that'll get me enough for most of it. Then I'm going to cut little ovals up there uh, so that if the tire does or suspension fully compresses and the tire might make contact, it's going to just poke through there. Um, but that way I don't have to uh, have the truck exhaust go much further underwater to launch the boat. All right, that's it. Getting the right line of sight is going to be fun. Well, it has been somewhere around two, two and a half hours since uh, I last ran the camera. And this is what I got done. This has turned out to be far more of a pain than I would have thought to cut these welds off. Certainly has me thinking about um, putting things back on with a bracket and bolts onto the welded spacers. Um, if I had a full shop with a plasma cutter, I would certainly do that, but um, this has not been fun. Three more to go. I think I'm done. I've used every cutting wheel I have. Two reciprocating saw blades. So, uh, time to shower and go hit the hardware store. We'll pick it up tomorrow. Okay, so about to start day two, a little bit after 10.30, I uh, just having a hard time getting the motivation with how much fun this was, so thought mowing the yard uh, was a bit more important, so I did the front, better half's doing the back. <clears throat> so yesterday after I shut down and showered, I made a run to Lowe's, needed some cutting wheels, little did I know I was going to spend $250, so... Bought all sorts of cutting wheels. These are all five packs, so 20 of those, two of the thick DeWalt ones, and then a couple of 60 grit sanding discs, and one 80 grit. And the uh, brand we went with, gonna try this Blue Fire, 
and I am hoping that there's like a massive quality improvement from these and the HF ones so that uh, maybe I just use two discs per axle bracket um, but we shall see and then uh, also had to go and I wanted a new helmet so of course the best helmet they had was available in the kit with all the stuff I didn't need so I picked that up and then we bought three more cans of paint this is the one we're going to go with here so far we've gone through five cans and none of them are really a good match but that's about the closest we've gotten so again this is under the boat at the axle it'll be fine but I wanted to get as close as possible so um, I'm gonna get set up and get going I am not going to <coughs> film a lot of this grinding for two reasons uh, one with how much not fun it is I want to have some music to try and keep my uh, spirits up and two it's just boring tedious work like I said the uh, one we got down so far was more than two hours to get that so that'd be a lot of boring footage bye for now okay I've lost track of what time I started on this second bracket but it is now uh, right at noon and uh, we can declare somewhat success for the first time so we've got one axle off one full axle to go and then we grind clean that up and you know reassembly and welding is going to be the easy part of this job so just a quick update here as I'm about to start on the front axle I can't do anything until I get the brake drum removed uh, there's no way that I can get the grinder behind and run this with that end so what I'm going to try to do is leave all the hydraulics connected and just remove these four bolts to disconnect the brake drum from the axle the spindle flange and uh, lift it up and put it out of the way so hopefully that will work Okay, so that worked for the brake. Uh, took off those four bolts. I can leave the hydraulics all connected. Um, and I'd have to mess with that since I just bled them. And this gives me even better clearance that I should be able to go straight across there. I've put a bag on the spindle just so I don't get all these uh, fine carbon particles uh, stuck in with the grease. I'll still wipe the spindles down, but. Um, little extra precaution okay I forgot to uh, record on Sunday when I was finally done but just before dinner I was able to get the second axle off so both axles are removed so today is Monday what I'm hoping to do when I punch out uh, for my working hours is start uh, cleaning up the underside of these mount points and try and get the new spacer tubing welded in uh, at least get them all tacked up tonight worst case uh, finish welded tomorrow and then Wednesday we'll start on the axles I'm really hoping to uh, make progress each night and have the boat back on this and ready to uh, go on a trip by uh, Friday that's all for now okay after about two and a half hours today I have two spacers that are installed. Uh, won't show you the air side because the cutting wheel cut into it being the first one and I had to uh, build up some weld to close up uh, that gap or slash so I'm not going to bother uh, feeding the comments but uh, again I'm a novice on welding but that'll do. Okay so I've got some progress to report. We have the rear idler axle all in position and tack welded in place so I'm about to uh, go throw on the uh, scrubby work clothes and come out and fully weld this and then hopefully uh, about three or four hours when my wife comes back home she can help me set the front axle so let me just uh, kind of walk you through what I did to 
get the axle uh, set up here. Um, this hasn't been uh, necessarily fun. The time I chose happens to be a big heat wave here in Chicago. So the temperature right now is 97 degrees with a heat index of 102. So I feel for people that do this for a living to have to put up with this in jeans, flame retardant shirts, bonnets, etc. It certainly isn't comfortable to be welding when the heat index is over 100 degrees, but I've got to just keep going and get this done. My son's going to come in uh, from Indiana tomorrow, and hopefully with his help, uh, second axle will be fully done. We'll cut some holes in the inner fender well here just as a little insurance. We're going to pull the brake line that I damaged and get that replaced, remount the brakes, bleed the brakes, adjust the brakes, and at that point we should be able to go pick the book back up. So let me walk you through how we set things up here. So as I had said before, I used those black marker lines that I put on the tape to line up the left side of the axle, get it all set. I then used two C-clamps to make sure that the axle bracket was properly centered underneath the frame of the trailer under the spacer that we had welded in uh, and then I put one single tack on the very outside of the center of that axle bracket so once that was done we went outside hang on so we came out here and I had the truck hitched up to the ball mount and what I did I had my wife uh, lay out here that's what the towels for and I'll show you how we line things up following the diagram from Dexter Axel I found the center of this ball and put a little purple dot on it and then I had my wife hold the tape measure at the 12 inch mark right there so we once we had that there we went and measured the distance to the front of the left axle bracket that was tacked in place got what that was went over to the right axle bracket got it to the same exact measurement and then tack that in place and uh, put a few more tacks in after that but that's where we're at now and time to complete the welding on the rear axle. Next update will be uh, as we are tacking the front axle into position. Okay, so about 6 o'clock in the morning and yesterday's progress the rear axle was fully welded in and we have the front axle all aligned, positioned uh, and have a tack just on this left side and it's fully clamped over on that side also got uh, spray paint done on this rear axle um, measuring for the alignment was quite a fight because as my wife was trying to hold the tape measure down on the front of the ball up there um, we had 18 feet of metal tape out as I would pull to make sure I had all the slack out of the tape I'd be fighting her and she was using all the strength she had to stay with the 12 inch mark right on the center of the ball um, but every time we double check recheck by the time I'd pull enough tension to get all the slack out um, she'd be moving so I did this little trick as a verification and I recommend it what I did was put a zip tie through the end of the tape measure and then I slid this underneath if you saw I've got an upside down ball there so I was able to slide that over the thin part just above the upside down ball and that didn't give it all so I really felt good that after doing that the rear axle was uh, exactly where it needed to be and after doing three or four times on the front axle we had it done so that's all set, rear one's all painted, and uh, we'll do more today, 
and we should wrap this up today. Bye. I'm a happy camper. Help has arrived. So now pretty confident we're going to knock this out today. The second axle is all welded in. I'm going to start painting. And what Tim is going to work on, give you a feeling for what the rubs were looking like. We've got the fenders removed. And you can see, look out Jackson. You can see how much the tires, the uh, that front tire, there's really a quite an impression there that it just burned the wood away. So we'll do that. We'll do this, work on the brake line, bull fenders, we're in the home stretch. See ya. We have holes to cut in the second fender. We knocked out a lot of stuff and didn't videotape, but uh, got the brakes reassembled. After they were reassembled, <coughs> what did we do after they were reassembled? We uh, got the tires on them, then we went and adjusted, so we've got just a slight amount of drag. Uh, we had to bleed them, naturally we did that before the tires went on. So we bled the system because we have a new line. And uh, basically we're just putting the fenders on and going for a test tow. See ya. Okay, so this is a bad angle, but I put a piece of cardboard in here to show that after the lift, how much space would have been. Oop. How much space would have been between I keep dropping it between the tire and the cardboard so problems definitely fixed and uh, all set to go okay so I wanted to wrap up this video uh, I realized that with my son Tim helping me, we didn't shoot much and we just went from one job to another and got uh, the trailer on the road. So yesterday we hitched up, we towed down to the Illinois River. So between going to get the boat from the marina and yesterday to actually go boating, we've got about 55 miles on the modification. So happy that everything's good. Wanted to go through some of the stuff that I used uh, besides just cutting off the axles and welding them back on. I had stated that I accidentally cut into the brake line on the left side. So from O'Reilly's, I picked up this NICOP uh, 316 brake line kit. It came with all of these fittings. This is the ones that I needed, the tube nut specific for the boat trailer. Um, and then, once I was able to push in uh, and get the tubing in place, I had to go and put uh, double flares on both ends. So this is a tool I picked up on Amazon. I had seen a uh, review on it where one the person said you had to pull it back from its uh, complete setting. I didn't have that problem. I used the tool completely as the directions were and it gave me two perfect uh, double flares and the brakes are working perfect. Once the line was in, then to bleed the brakes, I've had this Mighty Vac pneumatic bleeder for, I don't know, 10-15 years. Um, I probably paid 90, 100 bucks for it maybe. Uh, and with the use I've gotten out of it over the years, if I paid $400 for it, I'd still be uh, well ahead. So simply connect it to your compressed air. Take the little boot, put it over, and uh, you go ahead and open it up and it's just going to suck the fluid through. Now, if your master cylinder has plenty of headroom and um, 
you're doing this as a one-man person you can invert a quart of uh, brake fluid and sit it right on top of the master cylinder they give you adapters for that so you don't even have to worry about uh, bleeding the master cylinder dry it's constantly feeding things in so it's a really nice kit in this case with the front of the boat trailer we couldn't do that my son just sat up there with a uh, funnel and made sure that we stayed topped off um, lastly as far as just to comment on adjusting the brakes the let me go around this is the left side of the boat and the brake drums have the adjuster on this side so that if you spin it clockwise it's going to make the shoe smaller if you spin it counterclockwise it's going to make them larger so that means on this side when you get behind it and you want to make the shoes larger to create some drag you're clicking the star wheel upwards from this position the other side of the axle is the same where the stars on this side but since your access hole is on the opposite side of the adjuster wheel on that one you are clicking down to have it spin counterclockwise uh, and get them adjusted so you have just the right amount of drag so that's basically it everything's come out well we're going to clean up the trailer a little bit now and uh, hopefully just do a lot more boating take care if if you found this useful please like and subscribe and appreciate your time